in there. Oh. Richie's just moved into the holiday cottage, and I know he's not alone. Does he want purpose delivery? No. So why are you so interested? This is not for gossip. I'm just concerned about him. Lad that age needs looking after, you know, proper meals. I suspect he can go over at diner if he's hungry. I don't blame him for moving out the Sugden farm. That Sarah would try the patience of a saint. I bet he's really glad to get out of her clutches. All right, I'll take some sweets, Mum. I thought I'd get out for the day and enjoy the last half term. Yeah, help yourself. You're not meeting up with that Ollie Reynolds, are you? Can't help it if I run into her. It's a small village. I've told you before, she's trouble, and I don't want her leading you into bad ways. <gasps> Mum, I can look after myself. Well, if you do meet up with her, ask her if she knows who Richie's got in that cottage of his. Why don't you just ask Richie? That'd make me look nosy. Don't worry. I'll find out one way or another. Do you have to go to work again today? I thought we agreed to carry on as normal. There's nothing normal about this, Richie. I feel like a goldfish in a bowl, stuck in this cottage with no-one to talk to. You have to go out sometime, Sarah. What's the point? Jack won't let me see the children. Anyone I meet will be full of questions and accusations. What's the point in worrying about village gossips? It's all very well for you to say. I'll be their target. I'm the one who's abandoned her children. I'm the one who's cradle snatching. You're not ashamed of what you've done, are you? No. You just rushed me. I hadn't worked out how to handle it. Sarah, we were meant to be together. Whatever the problems, we can work them out. Then stay with me. Today. I can't. I've got to go to work. We need the money for the rent on this place. Look, I'm chasing a couple of contracts that could be worth a lot. But I'll try and get them sorted and get home early, yeah? We can talk about it then. Ah, Sam, just the man I was looking for. Thank you. I've run off some more copies of my new manifesto. Pop a few into your newspapers, will you? I can't. Mrs Windsor's already put her election stuff in. Well, simple solution. Bung hers over the nearest hedge and uh, replace them with mine. Go on. Oh, but she'd be angry. <laughs> Quite frankly, you'd be doing her a favour. Eh? I know her policies and her insane ramblings can only make her more of a laughing stock of the village. Go on, please. I don't want to lose my job. Sam? Sam? Oh, I hear you've moved into the village. That's right. Have you got a friend? I hope I've got a few friends, Sam. Including you. Uh, yeah, but that wasn't quite what I meant. Not that I'm being nosy or, or gossiping. What are you babbling on about? Nothing. Huh. Go on, then. Hurry up. Get these delivered. <laughs> I don't think Mark can help with my revising. Well, you can bring your books into my room. I'll touch her. <laughs> Watch yourself, Johnny. She's a man eater. Boys are folded up there and never been seen again. <laughs> Maybe we could do the same to you. The world would be a better place. Hiya. Hi, Don. I thought some of you come to help Johnny revise too. No, I came to go away from Mum. She's in voice of reason mood. She's told about the election. Not just that. She thinks she's on the scent of some juicy goss. Richie's moved back into the village. She reckons he's got some fancy woman hidden away. Lucky Richie. Who's the girl? I don't know. Probably isn't one. Just Mum getting the wrong end of the stick again. No. I reckon she might be right. What, and you know something about all this? Your new chef is giving Spanish lessons. Mm, just for a few mates. It's not a business or anything. I'm sure he could fit me in for an introductory course. Carlos, Viv wants to learn Spanish. Oh, I Do you know the country? Well, me and Vic spent a fortnight in Tenerife once, but we didn't have to learn the lingo. They all spoke English. So fish and chips, listen to the football results. So what do you want to learn now? Well, it could be useful when I'm on the council, especially when we start twinning with European villages. Don't you think you should wait and see if you win the election first? Besides, I don't have time to take on any more students. With Sarah gone, we're very busy here. Yes. Sarah's accidents changed things for a lot of people. What do you mean? Richie's moved back to the village. I guess her and Jack couldn't look after him properly while she was laid out. 
That'd probably do them good to have some time on their own. Well, I don't think Rich is on his own. He's renting the holiday cottage, and I don't think he's there on his own. He's got a girl in there. Huh? Trisha's still staying at your place? Well, she was wearing a mud pack over breakfast, but I'm pretty sure it was her underneath. <laughs> Can't be Trisha, then. Do you know who Rich is going out with? Perhaps he likes to be discreet. Well, he can't keep it quiet forever. Whoever she is, she's got to come out sometime. I was thinking, maybe I shouldn't go straight back to school next week. Why? You're not sick. I can't face what people so in here, what's happened. Well, I'm dreading it too, Andy. But we won't solve anything by running away. You know, Sarah made the choice, not us. We've got nothing to be ashamed of. It don't make it any easier. Well, it isn't easy farming this land. Sometimes everything seems to be against you, but it still has to be done. I mean, I work it for you and Robert and Victoria, and you'll work it for your kids one day, and nothing will stop us. You know, not the weather, not Sarah, not the village gossips. OK, son. Cheers, Dad. You're late this morning. Sorry, I I've been chatting to people about the election. I I've got Mr Pollard's manifesto, if you'd like to read it. No, thanks. Then perhaps Mrs Windsor's policies would be more your taste. As far as I'm concerned, you can bin the lot, including the candidates. Just leave me the courier. Uh, maybe your wife's more interested in politics. Is Mrs Sugden at home? No. Then can, can I ask when she'll be back? No, you can't. Just clear off, Sam. Don't usually see you in here this early. Must be quiet over at the surgery. I don't know. I'm not working till later. Oh. But I have got something to celebrate. Cotton Radio has offered me a slot on one of their shows. Ooh. It could be the start of something big. Could end up with one of them televets. Yeah. Might take a while, though. Ooh. <sighs> uh, can I offer you one a drink? You're very generous today, Eric. I don't suppose it's got anything to do with the upcoming election. <laughs> of course not. Uh, but whilst we're on the subject, I'd like to remind you all that, um, your votes can make a difference. Oh, you're wasting your time with me. I think politics is well boring. <laughs> I wouldn't even vote if my granddad wasn't standing. Well, you should. Women died to give you that vote. Remember the suffragettes? Pop group in the 70s. Uh, just put your mark by name on the ballot paper. I can see I'm going to need a new rule. One candidate in the bar at a time. I don't think my customers are stand being force-fed politics. I'm not canvassing. Just being a good neighbour. Well, we can all do with those. Richie's moved into the holiday cottage and I thought I'd buy him a housewarming present. Oh, nice idea. Do you want us all to chip in? Oh, no. No, it's just that uh, he's moved in with a friend and I thought it'd be rude not to put her name on the card and I was just wondering if anybody knew who she was. Are you sure he's living with someone, Viv? I'm certain. I heard him talking to her. Well, if you heard him, he could be talking to a budgerigar or a poodle. <laughs> I'm telling you, he has got a woman in there. Well, if he is, it's his business, and I'm sure if he wants us to know, he'll soon tell us. And if you really want to be a good neighbour, you'll respect his privacy. Oh, don't come all that holier-than-thou attitude with me. The only reason you're nipping gossip in the bud is because you know how much there is about you. A vicar should be speaking out against the sins of the flesh, not indulging in them. to know what's going on as I am, but they just don't want to admit it. Did you find out anything? What about? Your own place. I don't believe it. Check-in is settled in. What? Richard's living in there, and I know he's got a woman with him. Any signs? Oh, come on, Sarah, don't be so protective. We're bound to find out who she is sooner or later. Yeah, you're right. It's me. 
What? Richie and I are living together. But, but that'd be disgusting. I don't care what you think, Viv. You found out what you want to know, now leave us in peace. You're old enough to be his mother. I don't have to justify myself to you. No, because you can't. You know it's wrong to leave your children, but you just keep running, Sarah Sugden, because no decent person would want to be seen with you after this. to ask you, Vicar, since you're supposed to be the guardian of our morals. If you're going to go on about me and Ashley again, Viv, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Oh, no, this is much worse. I'm talking about Sarah Sugden. She's the one who's moved in with Richie. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Shouldn't you be saying sinful? You're supposed to condemn the breaking of the Ten Commandments. You must have got it wrong, Viv. No, I haven't. She admitted it, bold as brass. What about our poor children, eh? I don't think we should start making judgments until we know the whole story. Yes. After all, before you embarked upon your moral crusade for this election, even you were known to stray occasionally. OK, so I made some mistakes, but I've always been there for my children. Isn't that a mother's place? Yes, and look how Kelly turned out. <clears throat> oh, well, you may sneer all you like, but somebody's got to speak out, and if you haven't got the backbone to tell people the difference between right and wrong, then I will. <laughs> Oh, don't let her upset you, Ashley. Everyone knows what she's like. But she's right about one thing. I do have responsibilities to my flock. I need to talk to Sarah. <laughs> not so. You never know until you try. <laughs> see Mum in? Uh, yeah, she lost her She's in motion. I really need to see her. Is something wrong? I I'd rather talk to Angie. Sarah, this is not a nice surprise. Ollie, me and Sarah are going in the kitchen. We don't want to be disturbed. Yeah, OK, Mum. And turn that music down. What was all that about? I think we've just got the answer to Viv's riddle. Oh, Sarah and Richie? We've been carrying on for months. Never thought she'd move in with him, though. Oh, you know what the people are like in this village. They'll be tarred and feathered. Yeah, I know. You've got a visit at the Sugdens tomorrow. Oh, Mandy's volunteered to cover as receptionist for today since, um... Celine. What was wrong with the other one? You don't want to know. <laughs> That's very good of you, Mandy, but uh, I think maybe you and Zoe should do this Sugden visit. Jack will probably be needing to lean on his friends right now. Well, that's no problem. I can cover that one. Well, in the meantime, you should be down at Oak Tree Farm. I mean, there's no counselling involved. Last time I heard, Jess Tyler and his Aberdeen Angus were still a very happy couple. <sighs> right, so I'll, uh, I'll be off then. He wiggled out that one quickly, didn't he? I don't mind. Oh, Paddy, that's your trouble sometimes. You're just too nice. You never know what people are up to. That Adam is ambitious and he's out to impress Zoe. He's going to give you all the awkward jobs while he just covers himself in glory. I didn't want it to be like this. I thought you were going to talk to Richie. Are you saying you didn't want to go? I'm not sure. When Richie told Jack, I had to make my mind up there and then. Yeah, well, it's done now. Viv Windsor won't pause for breath till she's told the entire village. No, she's not going to miss a chance like this. It suits her moral crusade over the election. She'll turn the entire village against us. Not everyone. It's good to know I've got one friend left. You understand why I had to go, don't you, Angie? You'd have done the same if you were me, wouldn't you? To be honest, I can't imagine any way I'd ever leave my kids behind. So you're against me as well? I never said that. I'm your mate and I'll stand by you. I don't suppose everybody's going to be on your side. I was wondering if you had any ideas what I could get for Trisha's birthday. Well, I thought I'd buy something for a room. Like a year's supply of bin bags so her rubbish doesn't spread all over the place. No, I'm only kidding. I know Bernice is planning to buy something for a Spanish holiday. Mm, not fancy getting her a present she can enjoy with Adam and Spen, thanks. Is it OK if I take my break while we're quiet? 
Yeah, of course, but can we pick your brains first? What would you buy for a girl that you wanted to notice you? They asked Clint Eastwood that question. And he said when he was young, he didn't have to bother. But now jewellery usually does the trick. I'm not very near his age. True. But what he's got left over is more than you started out with. Jewellery it is, then. <laughs> have you heard the news? Sarah Sugden has walked out on Jack and the kids, come to live with Richie in the village. That can't be true. She told me to my face, bold as brass, not even ashamed of what she's done. Actually, Adam won't be able to make it tomorrow. I'm afraid he's really ill. It's a very delicate matter, not something I'm able to talk about over the phone. Let's just say, Adam won't be able to sit down for a while. <laughs> but there could be a stroke of luck for you, because I think I'm going to be able to persuade our senior partner, Patrick Kirk, to stand in his place. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a very experienced broadcaster. Well, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of his work on marsupials. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be there in the morning. Bye. What was all that about? Come for a drink and I'll tell you. Mm. I just don't understand how Richie could fancy someone like Sarah Sugden. Some men like older women. <laughs> no, Kathy's an old woman. Sarah Sugden's a grandma. Yeah. It's Trisha I feel sorry for. You must have dumped her for that. I'm sorry to have interrupted your day. <laughs> I'll give you a lift back. I don't suppose you want to be walking through the village again. See you in a bit. Is your mum had uh, weapons training? Sounds like Sarah's going to be needing an armed escort. Imagine how Andy and Robert will feel. Andy's known for a while after what I saw in the barn. Yeah, but it's different when everyone knows. I remember when Mum was carrying on with Terry. I used to dread going to school. Paddy, look what you went through to get your partnership. I mean, it nearly cost us our relationship. I'm not going to let some little flash kit like Adam push in front of you now. Mandy, he's going to kill me. Only if he finds out. And if that's after the broadcast, then we've won. We just need to find a way of keeping him occupied till then. Bottle your best champagne, please, Bernice. Mm, I'm glad someone's got something to celebrate. <laughs> Not so sure about that. Paddy, relax. It's as good as in the bag. But can you pay for the shampoo? I'm a bit short this week. Surprised you knew where to find me. No doubt Viv Windsor's been busy spreading the news. I'm not interested in gossip, Sarah. I'm here because I'm concerned about you and Jack. There is no Jack and me anymore. I thought you'd have worked that out by now. It's over. Are you sure about that? A lot of couples go through bad patches, you know. And sometimes, if they work together, they can come out the other side stronger than before. It's too late for that. Maybe if you talk to Jack. I've tried. He won't even speak to me. But then maybe you should try again, for the sake of the children. My children mean more to me than anything. I've thought about nothing else since I left. But going back to Jack isn't the answer. Having a mother in a loveless marriage isn't going to make my children happy. And what about Richie? Do you really think that he's the answer? I can't believe it's true. I just thought it was Viv spreading malicious gossip. Oh, well, the kids have been terrific. Andy's been helping me around the farm. Robert's been looking after Victoria. I don't think I could have got through it without them. You should have called me Jack. You'd know I'd want to help. Yeah, well, I thought I needed some time to get through it myself first. It's like Dad says. Me, him, Robert and Victoria, we're the family now. We've all got to pull together. Well, you've still got friends in the village. You know, people care about you. Now, if you, Robert or Victoria, ever need anything, you only have to ask. You can come to the diner for a meal any time. Thanks, but we've, we've already got a rota for dinner. Tomorrow it's me and I'm cooking sausage and mash. <laughs> we'll work out our shopping list later, eh? In the meantime, why don't you go and see if Robert needs any help? Okay, Dad. Give us a shot if you need us from him. <sighs> Sit down, Cathy. He's a real credit to you, Jack. Yeah, but I know how much he's hurting inside. How much we all are. That's what I don't understand, Cathy. 
Maybe I've not been the greatest husband. Maybe I deserve everything that Sarah chucks at me, but how can any woman do this to her children? You were lucky you caught me. I was just about to close up. Busy day. Oh, yes, everybody talking about Richie and Sarah. Oh, it's disgusting, isn't it? I hope you don't think we're all like that in this village. I'm sure you lead a blameless life, Mrs Windsor. <laughs> Where have you been all day? I was getting worried about you. Reynolds, and don't start on about it. I'm hard enough to cheat my own friends. If you say so. But you've missed a very exciting day here. Me and Sarah, she came over to visit Angie. Oh, I thought she'd be looking for some allies. Fine pair they make. One abandons her kids, one can't keep them in line. Did you hear what they were saying? No. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Just in case it got back to Robert and Andy. But it's the children I feel concerned about. It's a shame we didn't think about that when you were carrying on with Terry. I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have kids. At least that way, the only person I can hurt is myself. Hi, Cathy. Uh, Sarah's in there. Can I get you a cup of tea or anything? No, thanks. I've just had one. Jack and the kids. How are they? How do you expect? Look, Sarah tried to explain things to Jack, but he wouldn't even let her in the house. Don't you think it was a bit late for explanations when you'd already walked out? I didn't plan it like this, but at least it's out in the open now. Not like him and Rachel. You've never let him forget that, have you? Even when he tried to make up for it. But I guess you've had your revenge now. This isn't about revenge, Cathy. It's about me trying to find a new life for myself. I deserve a little happiness. I realise this has come as a bit of a shock, Cathy, to someone who's known Jack and Sarah as long as you. But the last thing we want is for people to take sides. I hope we can all still be friends after this. Sorry, Richie, but sometimes you have to make a choice. You had plenty to say when I was fighting for custody over Alice. But at least I know I put her happiness first and not my own. You don't care about anyone but yourself. That's not true. As far as I'm concerned, our friendship's over. And don't bother coming back to the diner, because I'm not working with you either. You've made your choice, and now you have to live with it. Mm -hmm.